Welcome to What Are You Sporting About podcast, a podcast about business, employment, sports, and entertainment to help educate, support, and guide you to your next level. Here's your host, attorney Savania DeBarros. Hi guys, it's Savani DeBarros, Protector of Athletes. I am back here again, and today we have the amazing Kristen Dent with us. Hi, Kristen. Hi, Savannah. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to be here and just chat about how sports is changing the game right now and how college athletes can prepare to win in this season. Absolutely. Absolutely. And Kristen, you have created something that is amazing. Um, It's new called Dear Athletes. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. So Dear Athletes was actually created during the COVID-19 pandemic where College athletes are a very overlooked population where people think they're very privileged. And a lot of athletes had to go home. And a lot of people don't know that there are several athletes that don't have a home to go to. 86% of college athletes live below the poverty line. So that's nothing with just um, an ethnic population or a race population. That is a college athlete population. Um, And several students were not able to eat three times a day. Most of them are relying on college to make sure that they're eating and having a place to stay. And so we really heard this hidden outcry and we saw how many athletes were distressed and really didn't know how to get help. And so one thing a lot of people don't know is you think just because you get on a team that it's a family and that is not the case. You're a family when you're profitable to these institutions. And as soon as you get injured, as, as soon as a college athlete gets injured, their scholarship is cut. You are only allowed to keep your scholarship, especially a full ride, if you are playing. And so now that all these college athletes had to abruptly leave and go back home, who's paying for their tuition? Who's sending them their stipends? Not everybody got that. And some students had nowhere else to go. Um, And so Dear Athletes, we are a nonprofit organization. It's called the Dear Athletes Foundation. Really, it's like an open letter to college athletes to really let us know that they see them. And I cheered when I was in college. I was a graduate student and I cheered for a Division I university. So I saw a lot of the ins and the outs, the background, the the donors, the parties, the invitation onlys, being around the billionaires. So I saw a lot. Um, And I believe God has called me for such a time as this to liberate um, and help other people who are college athletes as well. That's amazing. You know, so I ran track in college and I think I speak for a lot of people when um, I say like, you know, it, it was a struggle. Just being a college student in itself is a struggle. And there are times where you are hungry. Um, and I do believe that a lot of athletes become injured because of the inability to eat properly and even have the means to do so. So mm-hmm. what you're doing is is amazing. Um This is a very weird time that we're in, of course, Mm -hmm. because we have COVID-19 happening. There's social justice issues all over the place. And we have name, image, and likeness coming down this pathway. So you have definitely stepped in in a big way to try to fill the gap to uh, not only just support athletes, um, to make sure that they have the resources that they need to stay healthy, basically, Mm -hmm. Um, but you're also trying to educate them as well. So let's talk a little bit about name, image, and likeness, because this has actually been one of my favorite subjects so far. (laughs) (laughs) I've always wanted athletes to be able to profit from their name, image, and likeness. And we have a few states that have enacted legislation. Florida has um, actually made theirs law beginning of July of this year. And so a lot of, a lot of student athletes are now in the process where they have to really get, get it together because it's coming. It's Mm -hmm. really, really coming. So what are some of the conversations that you or your organization are having with, with these athletes and um, the importance behind NIL? Yeah. So, One thing is we have to understand what it means, who it's for, 
and the pros and the cons because there are cons to likeness. So number one, likeness is when a college athlete will be able to get paid by a brand or company due to their popularity, due to their likeness. Um, and it will no longer be a penalty or anything that can disqualify a player. That is beneficial because a lot of people think college athletes get paid a lot and they do not. Sometimes they get a $5,000 stipend per semester. Um, their stipend is heavily predicated on coming to 5 a.m. practice and 7 p.m. practice. And they don't have a lot of time for to have a life outside of act athleticism because even though we call them student athletes they're mostly athletes yeah now what does this mean for likeness this means we are going to have college athletes who are going to be getting you know 50 to hundred fifty thousand dollar checks for doing a instagram post for frosted flakes um for fashion nova and although that sounds really good this is now opening the door for more vultures. So now we are going to have more people in the sports industry, more sporting professionals looking to profit off the vulnerability of college athletes and become their agent, their publicist, their lawyer, which is a whole nother job. So one of the pros to likeness that we've been talking about is that's great that you're getting compensated because you are working hard. The con is this is another job and it, it can is. be a very huge distraction that prevents you from graduating. Well, it can be extremely overwhelming too because it's you're now turning into a business owner, like you mm -hmm. said, and when you have a business, there are multiple ways that multiple things that you have to implement to properly run that business. Um, and you know, having having a team is gonna be instrumental. Um, to that student athlete success. So then the question becomes like, how, how do you know how to answer, how to ask certain questions for certain professionals to build the right team? You know what I mean? Right. And um, that's when nobody's teaching you correct. or teaching these athletes. Do any of these athletes have an LLC? Do they have a DBA? Do they have a business bank account? No, but somebody who they don't know is going to approach them and really profit off of them. And they're going to get ripped off like 88% of professional athletes who go broke within two years after leaving the league. We are coming into a time when we're talking about social justice, justice on all platforms, justice in your finances, that you cannot rely on somebody, especially somebody who does not look like you, who does not value your integrity or your, or your culture, to protect your assets. Because at the end of the day, you're going to be a client for them for about five to seven years. And when you get injured or when you get too old and you don't get picked up again, they will get the next, the next set of fresh legs and profit off of them. Right. So likeness has to be education has to come with likeness because this is a new business and a lot of these students are not business owners or really set up for branding or anything like that as well. Now, the other thing why this is really positive is because a lot of these college athletes, you know, they're paying their, um, they're paying their own bills. I know a lot of them, there's a whole documentary on, um, it's called schooled. It's about how UCLA um, basketball players were like on the verge of robbing liquor stores because they were so hungry. And for those of you who don't know, That's when you're crazy. a college I never athlete, seen that. Exactly. If you're a college athlete, you're not allowed to work. You're not allowed to do like on campus work study. Like being an athlete is your job, but the stipend is not enough. And so you're paying your own phone bill. Um, yes, you have your housing covered, but you can barely afford a, de um, a meal at McDonald's. You're paying for gas. It adds up. So this is going to be helpful, but how it can be hurtful is not everybody is going to get likeness, meaning you will have maybe one or two players on the team that get picked up and make a lot of money. And then you'll have the rest of the team looking at them like, why are you getting chosen? We're the ones doing all the work. We're out here doing. And then there's a huge potential for inner conflict amongst players. This is what a lot of people are not talking about that there's already um, a certain level and drive within the team. People are always like fighting for position, fighting for playing time. 
So when you introduce likeness, now it's like, I'm not just trying to get playing time so I can play and possibly go to the league. I'm getting playing time so I can get somebody to pick me up and pay me for likeness, pay me to do a brand sponsorship. Yeah, that's true. And, you know, I think, but there's still the ability and the opportunity for athletes to build a foundation around their own particular names um, to really create something great outside of sports. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But again, it's going to take, having the right team around you, having the right support system around you to make it a success so that you're not wasting your time um, digging into something that is, 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 is going to be heavy. Because as you know, as a student athlete, that schedule is already packed. And yeah. so now comes the skill of management, time management, team management, um, being mm -hmm. able to make sure that the people you've put on the team are actually doing their jobs too. So, yeah. um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be hard, but I do think that there's going to be some reward to come out of it. I just know that there are a lot of conversations that have to take place that must take place for these student athletes, because we have seen traditionally, um, black and brown athletes, are the ones to struggle most, you know, being an athlete in, in college, but in not having the support that they need, which is one of the reasons why I believe that a lot of them have been working so hard to go pro, you know, mm -hmm. to fill in that gap. Um, but what I don't want to have happen is we get this, we get to this point, name, image, and likeness is happening. It's there. And this, the athletes are still falling by the wayside because no one properly educated them. Exactly. And I think that lack of education is why people prey on these college athletes or just athletes in general who don't have a strong support system Absolutely. In, and knowledge foundation in literacy, financial literacy, even cultural dynamics. Um, one thing that you will notice is, especially when it comes to the NBA and NFL, those are the two most profitable sports um, when it comes to college sports. And if, uh, college football is the highest generating sport. Um, averaging, you know, 38 million at minimum per weekend. Um, and I think it's important for us to understand that a lot of these players, college is not just um, to get an education, it's to provide for themselves and their families. And I think we have to remember that if you don't have a strong family support system, you are more likely to be taken advantage of, specifically players who do not have fathers. So what we do is we get a lot of these players who don't have fathers. They look to their coach as their father, having that father figure, and then they start emulating what their coach has, taking advice from him, even if that advice can lead to their destruction later. And so then they hire people who look like their coach and they don't hire people who look like them. But if you look at any other cultural group, if we look at our um, Asian American communities, our Hispanic communities, Arabic communities, their representatives are people of their culture. And mm -hmm. so we have a lot of people who are taking advantage of African Americans and isolating them from other African Americans. And if you believe that black lives matter, then black dollars matter. Mm -hmm. Because you want to, if, if you look at sports professionals, most of them operate in a clique. So they refer each other for services. So if Correct. your publicist is white and then they're going to refer you to a manager who's white, who's going to refer you to an accountant who's white, they are referring you to people who look like them. Mm -hmm. Do you mm -hmm. think any of those people are hiring black people to work for, for work? Do they have a black accountant? Do, are they coming to the black community for services? No. So why is it that it's okay for every other cultural community to do business with each other but we don't do business with each other. And then when black people do want to do business with each other, people want to say that's racist. No, boundaries only offend people who are used to taking advantage of you. And to any college athlete that is listening to this, I want you to know that you can get hustled by any, any cultural group. If you watch the movie Straight Outta Compton, it was a white man who clearly robbed Easy e and the entire Connect game because they trusted somebody. And there's going to be a lot of people 
who cannot play basketball, cannot play football. They are just looking for a fresh pair of legs that they can profit off of. And if you are not protected, if you don't have people who love you and care for you, if you don't know how to listen and read contracts, you are going to be hustled in this game of likeness. Yeah, and, so- and, and you're mm-hmm. right. And, you know, and sometimes too, I mean, there are some smooth talkers who who may look like you as well. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But you definitely, I, I think representation is is very important. Representation has been a constant um, issue that I've had with sports. You know, when you look at some of the major types of sports, and then you look at administration, the administration does not mimic the players who are down in the field and on the court. Mm-hmm. Um, so I definitely think representation is necessary. And it matters because when you create your business, um, it's not just about bringing the money in. It's also making sure that you have created a team and a culture who believes in your vision, who can help you bring that to fruition. And sometimes when, and that doesn't mean that other people of different races and backgrounds can't help you to develop that because some of them can um, but it all, it, it also depends on you as the individual, the basically being the coach in the driver's seat, being able to really identify these individuals and call out whether they mesh up with what your vision is at the end of the day. But it's, you're right. It's going to be so important, so important to make sure that you have the proper representation, um, to drive for that particular business idea. Right. And I think that, um, like you're saying, you, that's why I said you can get hustled by any cultural group. You yeah. can get hustled by someone who looked like you, who doesn't look like you. But what we're seeing is there's a huge gap. There's a huge there's just gap. A you're huge, right. Huge, there's just too much of a huge gap. Um, and there's an organization for anyone listening. It's called the Black Sports Professionals. I think it's called, yeah, BSP or BPS. Um, Black Professional Sports Agency, they're nationwide. Um, And that's a great place where you can find representation because um, people, I think it's really important that people have to educate themselves Mm -hmm. on how branding and marketing works. If you look at YouTube influencers, brands are looking for college athletes who have a YouTube page. People will pay you to review socks, to review sweatbands, to review um, sleeves. And that is a great way to supplement your income. It could be a great one minute video if Mm -hmm. you want. Um, I would encourage every athlete to really focus on their Instagram story. Um, You can already have your prices set out, you know, $100 for a story feature, $200 for a page feature. And the post would be up for seven days and then you could take it down. Things like that are really important to understand. And I think that when we have strong families, I know one thing that college athletes sometimes think about is like, I don't want to carry everyone on my back. I don't want to have to carry my whole neighborhood or my whole family. Well, if you are even graced with an opportunity to be a college athlete and then graced for the opportunity to be a professional athlete, you are carrying weight regardless. You have been anointed and called for this specific position, and there are millions of other people who wish they were in that spot. It's who you choose to carry. So whether you think that people look like you are going to weigh you down, guess what? People who don't like you will end up weighing you down. And I think that is the myth that we have to break, that only black people will bring black people down. Um, That's not true. Mm -hmm. And when you don't understand your identity, that doesn't mean you take everybody, but you have to understand the position that you're playing, you are going to have to take people with you. And then you have to choose who you have to do it with. And I just really hope we come out of that narrative. Um, we come out of that narrative that other African Americans don't know what we're doing. Every other mm-hmm. cultural group thinks we're profitable, but us. That's why yeah. there's yeah. nail salons, restaurants in black communities because we spend money. We are profitable. We are talented. And it's okay for us to circulate that money within ourselves. But why is it our DNA? Our community. Our DNA is used to make so many other people millionaires. Why don't we make people who have the same DNA as us millionaires? That's and so a, we that's have a to change the system. Yeah, we have to change the system. We have to be smart about what we're doing and how we do it. 
Um, and it's also going to be very important for athletes, especially now with name, image, and likeness um, happening for these student athletes to understand the concept of self-preservation because the, now there's a there's this opportunity to actually create a financial foundation. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And um, before athletes, college athletes weren't able to do this. So now whether you make it to the pros or not, you have the ability to really start and establish something that can be great, something that actually may do better than going to the pros. You know what I mean? Exactly. But still with that, you have to preserve. You have to make sure that you understand your purpose and where you're trying to go. Because if you don't, then you, you know, we can talk about everybody else who can swindle you and everything, but you'll, you'll end up swindling yourself, mm -hmm. you know, just for lack of education, lack of responsibility, lack of self-preservation. And sadly to say, sometimes it's the people who's, who's closest to us um, that, you know, we'll, we will tend to basically go into the hole for and not look at what the big picture is, you know? Right. And this is the thing, 98% of college athletes will not make it to their professional league. Whether you're in swimming, soccer, football, basketball, 98% of college athletes will not make it mm -hmm. to the professional league. That's, and I know that a lot of people not. have that aspiration. Yeah. You cannot rely on that. Yep. So with the platform, likeness is going to be beneficial for people who like, you know what, you may not go to the pros, but use your likeness, use the money that you're getting from right. likeness to start a need-based business, to start a profitable business, use your yourself and your name to have people pay you for advertisements, to do reviews. And then it's okay to go into a business that has nothing to do with sports as well. It's okay to um, have a job and have a side hustle as an entrepreneur. Um, one thing we've seen it from sure pro is. is, exactly, people lost their jobs overnight. Yep. Overnight, you are yep. told to go home. Overnight, you can't leave. Overnight, this is not the this is not the same time where our grandparents were able to have exactly. one person working outside of the house. Like nowadays, I mean, things are just so expensive. The cost of living is astronomical. That it's okay for both parents to actually hold down a few jobs or a few gigs or whatever side hustles. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, that's just how expensive and crazy it is. And then you factor into actually trying to build a business on top of that, you may actually need your side hustle to actually pay for that business. Exactly. And I think even that, they, like, that's such a big deal. So if you think about your grandparents and maybe for college athletes listening, maybe your great grandparents, mm -hmm. most of them own houses. Mm-hmm. But if you look at your parents, do they own a house? Something mm -hmm. has happened where it was much easier to get a house. It was much easier for there to be homeowners. There were more homes than apartments back then. And there just has, there seems to be a gap of struggle. Um, mm -hmm. And I know that we have to do our own due diligence where we stop trying to look like money and actually have money. We have Girl, to remember that. You're preaching a word right <laughs> Eat, there's a book, uh, a verse in Proverbs that says, there are many who are rich who pretend mm -hmm. to be poor. And there are many mm -hmm. who are poor who pretend to be rich. And that's real. Yep, that is so real. And when you're really about it, you have to understand that when you're, an, especially a college athlete or an, a professional athlete, you got about seven to 10 years. Yep. Hey, you don't have a lot of time. So you want to think about if, you want to think about a business because you can have multiple streams of income. Think about a business that doesn't need your face. Mm -hmm. Because when people don't like you anymore, are they going to buy your socks? Are they going to buy your shoes? You want to have a business that people don't even know you're a part of it and it's generating money. Mm -hmm. So you want to open a gas station. You want to open a grocery store because those are what we see in COVID are the need-based businesses. Grocery stores were packed out. Yeah, pandemic crew. Shelves. You want to go into the paper towel business. You want to go and start your own toilet paper line. You want things that, you know, I'm not praying for this to happen again, but you're seeing how 
those things were essential. And remember, that doesn't have to be your only business. But you want to start thinking about how can I have a business that has my face that doesn't have my face? How can I get into real estate where I have people um, where you you can buy an apartment complex for depending on where you live, two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. You can have people paying you a thousand dollars per month for rent. Mm -hmm. And if you have like 20 units in that building, that's twenty thousand dollars a month. Mm -hmm. If you were to get injured or out of the league. That is sustainable income. If you felt like the responsibility was too much, you can always supplement and get somebody else to be like a property management company to do a lot of the things for you. Or you could sell that apartment complex for $450,000. Yeah, I know there's a lot of athletes who want to get into real estate because real estate is a great way to create a legacy. It really is. Um, The only problem though is that a lot of these athletes are creating businesses, which is one of the reasons why my niche is athletes in business to help them structure and create businesses that can protect them instead of it being the other way around. Yeah. Um, but the sad thing is that a lot of them are trying to build these real estate businesses without having proper measures in place. Yeah. So, the, I mean, that's a, it's a great idea to do that, but then especially if you're talking about student athletes, the question is, do you, do you, for, do you number one, have the revenue already, the cash flow, the mm-hmm. seed to start something like that? So, I mean, cause that's, that's a huge endeavor. And, and while you're in college, I doubt you'll have the time to really manage the properties the way that they, they will have oh, to be course. managed, you know? So like, what, what could be an idea though? Um, like you said, something that is small, um, pandemic proof in a sense. I, I think back to these face masks, you know, everybody had to wear these face masks and then people just in their homes just sewing masks like crazy. Um, I mean, it's so small but, and it doesn't cost that much where if you can find like that one little thing that can fill a gap, you know, fill a void and the cost to entry is low, that's like the perfect option for a student athlete coming into something. And then once you build that cash flow, then definitely, I would say, definitely start looking at how you can build and find things that are in line with your purpose. Um, because I, I, I do know there's been several athletes that I've personally have spoken with who have just done things because, like you said, they were out here poor, but trying to act like they were rich just because they had a little money at the time. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I and definitely. I think, mm-hmm. No. Yeah. So this is exactly like a strategy that I would give. And this applies to all facets of life. First thing I would tell any college athlete. Um, one, what I mentioned about real estate, that's a goal you want to work towards. Got so that's you. a long-term goal. Okay. So the first thing that I would tell anybody in any stage that they're in is get a piece of paper and write down um down the middle, you know, or fold it in half. Mm -hmm. On the left side, write down what I have. And on the right side, write down what I need. Mm -hmm. The answer is already inside of you. Mm -hmm. And I think why a lot of college athletes get stuck is because they think their answer is outside somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And what I'm saying doesn't mean you do everything alone. It's not lonely at the top if you take people with you. Mm -hmm. When you write down what you have and see what you need, you realize, okay, I have 150,000 followers on Instagram. What Mm -hmm. do I need? I need people to pay me to have their products reach those people. Mm-hmm. Okay. So who would that be? Maybe I need to talk to a branding consultant. Maybe I need to reach out to my cousin who has a degree in marketing and branding. See your answer is in the house. Mm-hmm. Look at people in your family. Look at people who are close to you. Reach out to mentors. Who's doing what you want to do. Correct. So Correct. the easiest way to make money is off of advertising. Let people pay you to review your content or to post on your page. Post, they can make post a flyer on any business um, on your page. That's a great way to get paid. Number two, you can make face masks. Um, but if you don't live with anybody who knows how to sew or anything like that, that may be hard. But what you can do, you can have Red Bull hire you to be an endorser. And they will send you Red Bull, a case of Red Bull. And you just have to take a picture with it. And get paid $5,000 for that. 
So you want to reach out to big brands, write down what you have. What do you need? You need a big brand to sponsor you. People are actually in this time looking to help people. Yeah, which is the beauty of this pandemic. I, yeah. I love how people have really just come together and band together to really help each other. And that's, that's been a beautiful thing. Yeah. And so you want to think outside the box that who somebody's willing to help me. I just have to position myself so that they see me and let them know that I exist. But mm-hmm. when you write down those things on those, um, those two columns, it is a game changer. So you know where you're moving towards. Mm-hmm. The other thing I would say is... Um, learn a skill. Your downtime is your prep time. I learned that from TD Jakes. Learn a skill. Your degree, most people are not even working in the field of their degree. People want skills. So what I would encourage you to do, go online and get a Google IT certificate. It doesn't matter if you don't have, if your degree is in communications, you don't need, your degree doesn't matter when it comes to a certificate. Get a physician technician certificate. You'll be able to help people in the pharmacy departments at like Walmart and Target and all those different things. Get a certificate and plumbing, accounting, taxes. Those are things that don't take a lot of time and they are things that you can heavily profit off of. Um, One of the things that our generation is experiencing is like we get these degrees, but we're not getting jobs that can allow us to live comfortably. Back in the day, our grandparents could go to college and get a job right after and buy a home with the money that they were making. It doesn't work like that now. You got to be careful who you take advice from. Grandma and grandpa are giving you advice based on things that worked in their time period. We don't live in that time period now. There are jobs we have now that didn't even exist back then. Who heard of social media in the 60s? Nobody. But we have jobs now for social media managers. So when you write down what you have, you're going to leverage what you need and you will get super natural connections with people also create a linkedin profile business is being made on in linkedin there is destiny in the dms on linkedin people are getting paid and so that's (laughs) where you're going to meet a lot of your decision makers and i'm putting everybody on game because i do not want us to be stuck i do not want more athletes being taken advantage of um view yourself as a business and have mm-hmm. multiple streams. Mm-hmm. I mean, multiple jobs. Absolutely. It means how many streams can I get from an industry? And so when you have a skill and you have passive income, you're going to be able to get be a game changer. And one thing that we are doing is we are, lo- dear athletes, we looked at what do we have and what do we need? Okay, we have athletes from Duke, Boston University, Arkansas State. Like, we got athletes. What do they need? They need jobs. They need internships. The majority of college athletes complain that they cannot get winter or summer internships or jobs. Well, you tell them to call me. Right? (laughs) Right? Right? And a lot of it is due to their sporting schedule. Yeah. They have a very hectic schedule. And then, you know. You don't have time. Yeah. You don't have time to put anything on your resume. And so you're less likely to get hired. But what did we do? Dear athletes, we became the solution to that problem. You will always be profitable when you are a solution to a problem. You will always make money when you are a solution to someone else's problem. So we created... um, the Dear Athletes Inc. So the Dear Athletes Foundation is our nonprofit. um, And that's where we help college athletes pay off medical bills, debt, um, hunger relief programs. We partnered with DoorDash this summer. We gave away $50 gift cards to athletes who registered with us. um, And we are excited to create partnerships with other brands who want to feed college athletes. And that was the nonprofit. The for-profit is us. We created a staffing agency. Dear Athletes Inc where we place college athletes and assign them and place them um, with compatible organizations and companies for careers and internships. That's really amazing. I'm, I'm so happy that you were able to step in and fill that need. And I know that this is going to benefit a lot of athletes um, now and in the future. Yeah, thank you. And that's the thing when you are, constantly looking at what are people complaining about? That's another thing I would just tell any college athlete right now. What are people complaining about? What are things that bother you? Now be the solution to it. 
once upon a time, it really bothered somebody that they couldn't write something on a piece of paper and have it stick in front of them, um, like, and put it and put that paper anywhere. So what did they do? They created something called a sticky note. So they could write something on a piece of paper and stick it anywhere. Did people think it was dumb? Yeah. But that is a billion dollar industry right now. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. But somebody thought of something that bothered them and they created the solution. The minute you do that, you will be profitable. And I will just say this, when you start writing things down, that's a form of healing. It's getting a lot of uh, athletes struggle because they keep too many things in their head. They hold too many things in. I just want to let everyone know, listening to this, you don't have to be that strong. Do not have a perverted sense of strength because that leads to silent suffering and you will be suffering and drowning and God will send boats and people to help you, but you will be too prideful to receive the help. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to tell everybody everything, but you are responsible for getting it out. And I can definitely speak to that. And I tell you, writing is has been one of my therapies for a very long time. Um, writing music, writing poetry, writing books. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, it's it's definitely a therapy because you do you do get it out. I, I definitely uh, will agree to that. Uh, Kristen, it's been amazing talking to you, and I love everything that you're doing with your athletes. Please keep it up. If there's anything that we can do here at What Are You Sporting About to assist you in your efforts um, to help these athletes in in ways that will help them to become profitable at some point um, in the future or down the line, um, or just to support them for resources, let us know for sure. Um, We definitely appreciate you having, having you here, and we hope to completely connect with you again (laughs) yes yes thank you for having me this is great i appreciate your platform and what you're doing having such a specific niche and for you to be a lawyer and have services that are so necessary like thank you for what you're doing and just even thank you for your time i really enjoyed myself and i hope to come back as well absolutely all right well we'll talk to you soon thank you bye bye Thanks for joining us this week on What Are You Sporting About? podcast. Make sure to visit our website, prosportlawyer.com, where you can subscribe to the show in iTunes, Stitcher, or whatever your favorite platform is so you'll never miss a show. And while you're at it, if you found value in the show, we'd appreciate a rating on iTunes or iHeartRadio. Or if you'd simply tell a friend about the show, that would help us out too. If you like the show, you might want to check out our book, What Are You Sporting About? Attorney Savania DeBarros is available for private consulting at sldebarros.com. And remember, we're here to educate, support, and guide you in your journey to success because we're all sporting about something. Thank you.